International art fairs are a crucial component of the art market, acting as a platform for galleries and artists to make their presence known, sell their works and forge links with the most important people in the art world, uber wealthy art collectors. The Armory Show in New York is no exception. Now, among the world's most prestigious events of its kind, the annual fair is considered to be the unofficial kickoff of the New York fall art season, with tens of millions of dollars moving through the fair every single year. But this prestigious event wasn't always so esteemed. In fact, when it was rebooted in the 1990s, many thought it would fail. So let's take a look at the full history of the Armory Show, dating all the way back to 1913. The 1910s represented a dawn of a different time. Einstein was working on a new theory of gravity, telephones were rapidly entering American households, massive skyscrapers were rising on city skylines, and women were marching for their rights on the streets around the country. And in 1913, the International Exhibition of Modern Art, which came to be known simply as the Armory Show, shocked the world and had a profound effect on artists and collectors forever. The show was impressively organised by a group of just two dozen young artists who raised money, generated publicity, transported the art, rented the armory and staged the exhibition, all without public funding. But what made this art fair different? In this period, American audiences were used to seeing Rembrandts and Titians in their galleries, a very realistic type of art. If you saw a female nude, it was very traditional and portrayed perfect classical beauty. In comes the European avant-garde. Imagine what it would have been like to see works by Pablo Picasso, Henri Matisse, Marcel Duchamp, Paul Gauguin, Paul Cezanne and Vincent van Gogh, all together for the very first time. Of the 1,400 objects on display, it was the minority of works by European avant-garde artists that caused a true sensation, and of course some outrage. After a blowout success in New York City with over 87,000 visitors, the fair travelled to Boston and Chicago, where students actually burnt paintings by Matisse in protest. But the critical response it received came to represent a turning point in the history of American art. It was a reordering of the rules of art making. It wasn't until 1994 that the Armory Show, or at least a version of it, rose again. That year, four young downtown New York art dealers had the goal of creating a new art fair that acted as a communal space for emerging artists to show their work in a radical fashion. So, they created the Gramercy International Art Fair as a low-cost, low-risk event hosted at the Gramercy Park Hotel in New York, an unusual and eyebrow-raising location where visitors could view works exclusively by living artists. Galleries covered the cost of the room plus an administration fee of around $50. Tickets to the fair cost around $5. The hotel room booths doubled as accommodation for many of the gallerists, staying in the room overnight and then opening their booths during the day. In a city that was experiencing violent crime at an all-time high and the AIDS crisis having ravaged much of the artistic community, the Art Mavericks pulled together what would become one of the most successful art fairs in the world. Once the fair outgrew the hotel, it paid homage to the original Armory Show by taking its name and moving to bigger and bigger spaces, from the 69th Regiment Armory on Lexington Avenue to Chelsea Piers. Today, it's held at the Javits Center and is a cornerstone of New York's cultural landscape. Not only does the fair attract the world's leading international contemporary and modern art galleries each year, but it also positions the city as an important place of cultural capital through thoughtful programming, meaningful institutional partnerships and engaging public art activations. This year, after being acquired by Freeze, 225 leading international galleries representing more than 35 countries are bringing hundreds of millions of dollars worth of art through the doors of the fair.
conceived by a small group of enterprising artists in the early years of the last century and then rebooted in the 1990s as a gritty alternative to establishment events like Art Basel and Expo Chicago, today some galleries pay upwards of $100,000 to exhibit at the prestigious Armory Show Art Fair. The result? A groundbreaking cultural venue that's become essential to the vitality of the global art market and beyond. And while the artists and the size of the fair have changed over the years, its dedication to showcasing ingenuity and groundbreaking work has not.